Welcome back to the garage everyone. Uh, as you can tell, today's something completely different. Uh, this is going to be heavily, heavily based off of uh, the project done by Blackbeard something or other on YouTube. He's a big channel. Something to that somewhere. Anyway, I'm going to put my own spin on it. Commercial units are available for like upwards of $200 and uh, for what they are, it just, it's not worth it to me. Anyway, here's everything you need. You don't need a 3D printer to do this, but I did make use of mine to uh, make a custom case uh, for the project. You can buy just a project enclosure box on Amazon or eBay. That would work just fine. You just cut out the holes where you need them. Uh, if you're planning on making one of these um, and you do have a 3D printer, I will make the uh, files available on Thingiverse um, to download. So I already designed and printed the box as you saw in the intro. So we can uh, assemble everything now. Uh, the first step is going to be destroying the power adapter. So let's give that a go. voltage coming in, uh, going into this, going to 5 volt DC, going through this, coming out here as uh, 12 volt AC or around that AC. And then originally what this thing was made for, we got the 12 volt DC coming out. I'm going to designate polarity sides here, this is positive, this is negative. That does matter with DC. I don't think it will with AC, but um, we will find out soon enough. So DC positive and negative will hook up there, and AC will hook up there. Then we can take our electrodes when it's all finished, and plug it in here, and it'll be a, a jimmajig. So, little wrinkle. So I got it all wired up when the switch is toggled to etch. Figured the wires on the one side would uh, be the ones to output, but it's actually these ones. So AC and DC are reversed. So when I have it marked to etch, I got 12 volts AC coming out of the output. So that's a problem. So I'm gonna need to switch those, those two uh, inputs. So at this point, we've made all our connections. Everything's all connected. So I'm just gonna glue this USB plug in place with the hot glue gun. And then all we have to do is throw everything in as best as we can and glue everything in place and put the lid on.
So I made a quick and dirty electrode and this is just the end that will actually come in contact with the stencil to etch in the mark. So this will be connected to my old solution for etching which is uh, just some alligator clips that I connected to a 9 volt. You may have seen in a previous episode. So I cut off the clips on one end. This end I'm going to solder onto this male XT60 connector so that it will plug in here. Making sure to keep my polarity straight. Then I will cut off the negative clip on uh, this end, so the positive will stay my grounding clip. Then I'll strip the wires on the negative lead and pinch them between the washer and the, the uh, nut on the electrode. I got this felt that uh, will wrap around the electrode and then uh, we can dunk that into salt water, um, which is necessary to etch, and yeah. What we do to prisoners who don't cooperate? We hook them up to the box. What is uh, the box? Idiot. Like this, I take one electrode, I put it here. I take the other one, I put it. If you'd like to see this guy put to some actual use uh, with some real projects, make sure you've subscribed. I'm going to be getting a lot of use out of this uh, bad boy right here. Uh, the machine's doing what I need it to do. It's delivering the right type of electricity where I want it. I just got to work on the actual process, like how I attach the stencil and uh, how, I, how long I etch for and how I clean the stencil before the etch and the mark, which I think would have helped a lot with this test. But, but yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time. I'm glad he's pushing up daisies. He is not pushing up daisies. He is dead. <laughs>